or residential. Okay. We invest in the property that people need to live in and can afford to live in. Commercial real estate loans are going bad, especially loans backed by office properties, many of which remain troubling unfilled three years after the pandemic first revved up remote work. Note how exposed banks are to CRE loans. This is commercial real estate loans, that's CRE. Half of current CRE loans are held by banks with smaller banks disproportionately represented. For banks with only 1 billion to 10 billion in assets under management, CRE loans account for a third of their total lending. 33% of a bank's balance sheet is held by commercial real estate loans, which are now hovering at a 17.3% vacancy. Now, to put that in perspective, our portfolio as a company has a 0% vacancy. We have 100% occupancy in our portfolio right now. If you wanted to rent from us, you couldn't because we don't have any product to rent to you. Meanwhile, these banks that have these loans, 17.3% of them sit vacant. How do the borrowers on those cover the debt service if they have no income? Well, it gets worse because many of those loans are coming up on what's called a five-year call or a balloon. So when you get financing from a bank, you typically get it for 30 years amortized or 25% on commercial, and then you have a balloon payment in 60 months typically. Well, loans that originated in 18 are ballooning this year. Now, is a bank who wrote a loan at 2.5% or 3% five years ago going to extend that loan for the foreseeable future, or are they going to call the loan and require that borrower to go out and get a new loan at the new rates at 65 to 7%? Is the bank going to extend or call? What do you think? Call, why? So they can get that money liquid and redeploy it at a 7% rate instead of keeping it in this loan at 25 and 3%. So what is the investor who purchased this building going to do when their capital costs double? From three to seven? How do you cover the debt service on that? So what is being anticipated is imminent default on up to 30% of the commercial portfolio nationwide. Now, again, this is just office buildings like this one, okay? Now, we're, we're gonna be okay. Our building is 100% occupied. We have all, people on all three floors, okay? But there's a lot of buildings like this that no companies are in. Anybody live in Liberty Lake? You've been out to the, um, uh, the business park out there where the Comcast building is and the uh, Mutual of Enumclaw building is and then there's also the, is it Farmers? There's three buildings out there. They're all 120,000 square feet and they've been sitting vacant since the pandemic. When COVID hit in 20, they've been vacant and they remain vacant. What's the building owner on that place gonna do? Now, you can't paint the whole office sector with a broad brush. Vacancies have riven, risen most in the biggest urban markets and tech hotspots. So the, the places to be of the greatest concern, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Seattle. This is where we'll see it hit the hardest. Markets in the Sun Belt, such as Miami and Palm Beach, are doing better. Ditto for Boston and San Diego, two cities with thriving life sectors where commercial space is in demand. Now, all this means that the downturn in office space has a long way to go. Estimates we've seen suggest that property values could fall by another 15 to 30%. Now, should we as an organization be concerned with any of this? We should be aware, should we be concerned? No, why? We're residential, okay? We invest in the property that people need to live in and can afford to live in. Now, last Friday, we went live with two new listings on the LAT side. With it, by Sunday, we had five offers over asking price on one. We had seven offers over asking price on the other. Now, does, does, do these results speak to the gloom and doom that's taking place in the market? No, why? Because we invest in real estate that people need to live in and can afford to live in. Now, my presentation at the Mastermind last Monday was, look guys, if you wanna put your client's money in safe investments, here's the box. And I showed them the five Kogo box, right? And what are the five criteria of a Kogo loan? Not above the FHA cap on the retail sales price. Five bedrooms, three baths max. Half acre or less. 2,800 square feet or smaller. And one to four units, okay?